Welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast, brought to you by Milo Tree. Here's your host, Jillian Leslie. Hello, my friends. Welcome back to the Blogger Genius Podcast. I'm your host, Jillian Leslie, and I'm a serial entrepreneur and blogger. I love growing businesses on the internet, and I love helping you grow yours. Before I launch into the episode, I need to ask you a question. Are you feeling burnout? Are you feeling like you are a slave to the algorithms and they're constantly changing and it gives you anxiety? Then please come to my workshop on October 6th where I'm gonna show you how easy and necessary it is for you to build your digital product empire even if you have no idea what to sell. My goal with the workshop is to show you how to use social media and Google to your advantage so you can make more money by selling your expertise directly to your audience. And once you get it going, there's no ceiling to this new way to monetize. So put your financial fate back into your own hands. I'm going to show you how this is especially for bloggers who feel like they are running themselves ragged. Head to Empire dot mylotreecart.com and sign up ten dollars october 6 1 p.m central time and i can't wait to see you there for today's episode i have rick mulready on the show i first heard him on amy porterfield's podcast and he is friends with pat flynn he is a coach he has a group he is an expert in facebook ads but really he's a mentor to so many online entrepreneurs He talks about his goal of getting to a million dollars. And what was interesting was then he talked about how ultimately hollow that was for him. And he got real, especially toward the second half of the episode, sharing about his own personal struggles. This is one of those stories where what it looks like on the outside isn't necessarily how it feels on the inside. So I think you're going to really like this episode. So without further delay, here is my interview with Rick Mulready. Rick, welcome to the Blogger Genius Podcast. It is so great to have you here. I'm honored to be here. And Thank as you. I I'm shared, excited for the conversation. I have been a fan of yours for a couple of years, and this is a lesson to everybody out there. I literally reached out to you. Now you're going to get pummeled, but I reached out to you on Instagram. <laughs> I just DM'd you, and I said, I'm a big fan. Would you come on my show? And you said yes, and here you yeah. are. I think it's it's something that uh, you know. I'm glad I saw the message, and I check all my DMs and so forth. I, mean, I can't respond to every single one. <laughs> However... Like, this is something that I teach our students is like, don't reach out via email well, unless you have their permission, for example, right? So like, you reached out via Instagram DM, like, perfect. Mm-hmm. That's different from what most people do. And it wasn't a, um, like a form DM, because I get those a lot too. And it was just like, just personable, you know? So mm-hmm. you never know, just take a chance and you never know. Absolutely. Usually, like for, for me, if it makes sense to, um, you know, for, you know, your audience and to serve your audience and that sort of thing, like, yeah, absolutely. So will you share how you got started in digital marketing and business building and like where you are now? I know you're in San Diego, but just how the yeah. whole thing came together. I wish I had like a really cool... I wish I had like a really cool like reason for why I did it, but <clears throat> the background is is a long time ago. It was in uh, 1999, actually. So I'm dating wow. myself here. Wow, wow. Um, and I was working for the Washington Capitals hockey team. I am a hockey fanatic, and I worked for them for five years. And I wasn't. I sort of hit my ceiling as I was working in the general manager's office and I was sort of hit my ceiling there. And then I, and I started seeing what some people were doing online in terms of like, you know, generating money from their blog, et cetera. Mm. Mm. And I was like, that's pretty cool. And I do not come from an entrepreneurial family whatsoever. Um, But I started looking at it. I was like, how cool would it be for me to be able to, you know, the, the same thing that most people think about when starting a business are like, Oh, I would like to make my own hours Mm. and I'd like to make, you know, like do whatever I want in order to make money. And so that's what 
appealed to me. And so I literally reached out to somebody. His name is Adam Baker. Mm-hmm. He years and years ago he used to run. This is back in 2010. He used to run a website called Man Versus Debt. And mm-hmm. he was teaching people how to get out of debt. And he was making a lot of money from his website. Mm. And so I hired him as a coach. I remember wow. I paid him 500 bucks a month. Wow. And, and that was sort of the genesis of getting into Facebook ads because he said, the first question he asked me, he said, cause I had no idea what I wanted to do. The only thing I knew is like, I want to create a business online, but I had no idea what that was. And he said, how could you help me tomorrow if I needed help, like, what would you do? And I said, I could do Facebook advertising for you because at the time I didn't know Facebook ads, but I knew online advertising because I've been doing it for years at that point, like pretty much uh, 10 years at that point. Mm. And so, and I'd been selling online advertising. And so he said, okay, what would that look like? And so long story short is like, I started to teach myself Facebook ads mm. and I developed an ebook, um, $47, never forget, $47 ebook teaching Facebook ads. Now this is back in 2000, this is 12 years ago. Wow. Back when they just had like the little tiny ad on the right-hand column. And so I started running some ads a little bit for a couple people, which was not successful at all. And... Yeah. And so I just was like, all right, this is really cool. I remember making my first sale. I was in, um, I think I was in Santa Barbara with my wife. We we're visiting Santa Barbara or something. And I remember getting a notification on my phone, like PayPal. I'd like somebody bought my $47 course. I have no idea how that happened. I actually don't even remember how they found me. But anyway, I was like, oh, this is pretty cool. And so September. 30th, not that I know the exactly, it's a, it was a Friday, September 30th, 2012. I left the corporate world, woke up Monday morning and I said, oh my, like, what did I just do? And so again, long story short, floundered until January, 2014, then got some coaching, figured out this whole webinar thing. I sold an ads course before creating it. Mm. And I did $30,000 in, in 45 days. Nice. And I was like, oh, okay, there's something to this. And now, by the you, way, I start- did, were you blogging? Were you doing anything for outreach? So, yeah, so I was just gonna say, so I started a podcast in 2012 called Inside Social Media. Okay. This is during my floundering times. Um, actually, I take that back. It was January of 2013 that I started the podcast. And- I call, you know, inside social media, the the tagline was big brand strategies for small business budgets. And the whole concept was, again, no monetary, like no plan, just like, oh, let's create this thing. So I interviewed heads of social media from the biggest brands, like, you know, McDonald's and Ford and JetBlue and Lowe's and all this, all these other companies. And we talked about what they were doing. Red Bull talked about what they were doing in social media and how small businesses could take the concept and do it for their own small business. Mm -hmm. Again, there was no strategy behind it. I didn't really know why I was doing it other than podcasting was super brand new at that time. And I was like, oh, I could do that. I don't wanna be on video, I can do that. So I started a podcast and, but that it wasn't leading, it wasn't, you know, helping with, Facebook ads or anything like that. And so that's where the disconnect was. And okay. so when yeah, did you, because here's the thing that I, I coach a lot of creators Yeah. and what I, and by the way, this has been the case also for myself. Mm-hmm. I've built parts of my business yep. and then to kind of go, oh, wait a second. I could tie this piece to this piece or this piece to this piece and then bring it together. So I'm going to just give an example. We've launched this thing I told you about called Milo Tree Cart, right? Mm -hmm. And all I'm looking for are bloggers who have big audiences who aren't selling directly to their audiences. And if I can find you, I can make you money or I can help Mm -hmm. you make money. So uh, for example, I'm 
a woman comes to me and she's a food blogger and she has like 200,000 Instagram followers. And I say, with big food blog. And I say to her, and has been working on growing her email list mm-hmm. and is not selling anything directly to her audience. Yeah. And I go, let me tie these pieces of your business together because you could turn on a switch and make thousands of dollars. Yeah. So how did you start? And by the way, she's just doing that. And all of a sudden going, wait a minute. I never knew that all these pieces could work together because I feel like we're working on our businesses. Like I'm going to start a podcast. And I'm always like, sure. well, why are you starting a podcast? Yep. So tell me how you put the pieces together and how you recommend other people put the pieces together. So they're not like you and me and this woman going, oh my God, I've waited five years to start to thread these so that I can like accelerate my growth. So I don't recommend doing it the way that I did it. (laughs) Okay. It was, it was, I mean, I I say that, but I had the same goal that so many people have there. I I was just like, I want to make a whole bunch of money on my own terms. I don't want to report to anybody. I don't want to go into an office. And that was it. Like, I, did, I wish I had, I wish I could say I had some like deeper why at that time. I didn't, I want to make, I want to make a crap load of money and I wanted to work whenever I wanted to work, you know? And so, and, and back then I say back then it sounds so old, but like 2014 and it still is unfortunately, but like the number of that means you've made it as I make air quotes is, you know, I, I, you hit seven figures. So that became my goal of of the business after seeing the opportunity that in those first 45 days I made 30 grand I was like holy cow this is really cool so I just kept doing more of I just repeated doing webinars selling my course and that first year we did $110,000 but I didn't have a strategy I really didn't I was just like okay this webinar thing is working this is back when not a lot of people were doing webinars and I was selling a course that people wanted. I had two levels, 497, 997, 997 was like quote unquote VIP version. And I just, that's what I started to do. And then I started to follow, like I started to fall into what happens for so many people where people would say, Hey, local businesses need help with Facebook ads. And I'm like, that's a great idea. Let mm. me add, let me do a local business version of my course. So I did that. So, and then I got another, you know, other people said like, let's do a, why don't you do a really scaled down version of your course? And like for straight up newbies. Mm. So I created a $197 course called FB ads for newbies. And then somebody said, you should serve ad managers. Great mm. idea because I ad managers are okay. terrible. So you're- and so I started chasing all these things because in my mind, I was like, in order for me to hit seven figures, I got to be doing all these different things. And before I knew it, I had three courses, I had a membership, and I had a, a very, very, very distant version of what my accelerator coaching program is today. Okay. And five different offers, all different audiences. Like, and I was running around, like, you know, just, I was, I just burned out, honestly. Mm. Mm. And so there wasn't, the only strategy again was I want to hit a million dollars because that means I've made it. Mm. And so all this to say, there was no strategy. Mm. I had stopped the other podcast. And then in 2015, a full year after I started, a little over a year, I started The Art of Paid Traffic, which is the same podcast I do now. I just rebranded the name a few years ago. There wasn't any podcast at the time on paid traffic. You know, there's Mm -hmm. a whole bunch now. Mm -hmm. No one was talking about it on podcasts. And, you know, having done 52 episodes in my first episode for my first show, I knew podcasting. I loved it. And I saw a gap. I said, no one's talking about at the time, no one's talking about Facebook ads on a podcast. So I started it and it just took off. Mm. And that really started to sell, you know, like just my business kind of took off at that point. But 
I don't recommend doing it all that way. Okay. So whatever so, I'm doing now, if I were to do it again. Yes, let's talk about that. And I'm sort of, honestly, I'm sort of, and I haven't talked about this publicly yet, but I'm sort of reinventing things for myself Ooh. in the business. I've been doing this a long time and eight and a half years in, and in the online space, I call it like dog years. Like that's a long time, you know? And so I'm just kind of rethinking, like, what do I want to, what do I want my work to look like mm. and how I serve people specifically, how I show up, what type of content, well, the content's not changing, but like how I put it out. And so I'm sort of looking at that and I'm doing what I would recommend somebody just starting out do is what is, what do you want ultimately? What is the, what kind of business do you want? What does that look like? Like everything from what would you teach? What type of person do you want to, do you want to serve? What problem are you solving for them? How many hours a week do you want to work? That sort of thing. Mm. Like, it, are you comfortable on camera? Like doing video? If the answer is no, okay. Well, are you comfortable on doing a podcast? If no, are you comfortable writing? You know, it's like, Mm -hmm. finding your comfort level. Mm -hmm. But the but what the point I'm making here is you work backwards from your end goal. Mm. So if I knew at that time, I said, okay, let's just say, let's just use the revenue number. I want to be making a million dollars a year or I want to be generating a million dollars a year. And, you know, what we teach in our accelerator program is that you can have a very successful business, whatever success means to you, in a 25 hour a work week or less. Mm. So let's just use that as a framework and say, okay, I wanna be, I wanna be generating a million dollars in revenue and I don't wanna work more than 25 hours a week. Okay, great. Well, you probably aren't gonna start out with <laughs> 25 hours a week or less. Yes, but yes. You work towards that, but you built, so that's your end goal and you work backwards from there. Okay, it's let's like, okay. do that. Let's do that. Let's yeah. do that. So first and foremost, you are going to need like you have, and, and this sounds so basic, but I mean, I have this conversation literally multiple times a week with people who are doing like lots of money in their business, multiple six, multiple seven figures. Who is your target audience? Mm -hmm. Who is the person that you want to serve? Mm -hmm. What problem are you solving for them? And are you talking to them in your messaging? And I kind of laugh like that a little bit because you wouldn't believe how many people have very successful businesses who really aren't doing that, mm. who aren't speaking to your direct person. Like you just described, like, like the perfect, you describe perfectly who you want to serve, who you serve, you know, with this. And so, okay, what problems are they having? What types of things would be helpful for them? Are you speaking directly to that person? And okay, now you understand that. What is your offer? Most people think like, oh, I got to create an offer first and then figure out all those other things. No, you're figuring out your audience, who you want to serve and like all the things I just said. And then you like, okay, what is the offer going to look like? So How best do I want to serve them? hope you guys are enjoying this interview. And if you are, I'd really appreciate it if you shared the episode with people who might like it. So this is still a growing podcast and it is basically impossible for me to exaggerate how much help it is for the podcast when one of you shares it. So if you share it in a Facebook group or a group chat, or you send it to someone you think might like it, it helps a ton. And I would be eternally grateful. And now back to the show. I talk about this as emergent business building. Yep. You're saying, put that target out there. I want to yep. make seven figures. Mm -hmm. How I'm going to get there, I don't quite know. Yep. And I'm going to be kind of letting this thing emerge while talking to people, while hearing their problems, putting out possible so small solutions and saying, yeah. does this solve it? Does this solve yeah. So for example, back to what I was talking about with big bloggers who aren't selling directly to their audience. Well, guess what? I learned this the hard way. 
I said, anybody who wants to sell a digital product, come talk to me. Mm -hmm. And I've got the tool in place. I've got this payment platform that's super easy to use. So come talk to me. And guess what? People yeah. did. And people sure. and guess who I could not help. I could not help you if you didn't already create an audience. Because right. I can give you all the selling materials and the platform and make it super easy. However, if you don't have an audience to sell to, like that's a problem I can't solve for you. I can yep. point you in the direction, but all of a sudden I've been able to go, no, 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 this is who I serve. And if I can do it, I can I promise you, we will have success. There's a mindset there though, that people need to be able to wrap their heads around because what you just described, Jillian, is exactly what most people do. They think in order for me to have a big business, I need to be broad and who I serve. So you're like, all right, anybody with an online business, you got questions, come talk to me. Well, that could mean e-commerce. That could mean somebody who just has an idea. Maybe they've like, for me, I, you know, back when I sold one online course, like, all right, I have an online business, but I don't have an email list. You know what I mean? So it's actually the opposite of exactly what you're saying, Jillian, is like, in order for you to grow much more quickly, you have to be refined and, you know, and it's, it's the whole cliche, you know, the riches are in the niches, but like, that's really true. And so I've actually come full circle for me specifically where I only have one offer, mm. like, and it's the best thing ever because everything leads to that offer. Mm -hmm. All of my messaging, all of my, you mm -hmm. know, marketing speaks to that person and I'm very specific who it's for and who it's not for. Mm. Most people think like, again, well, no, I don't want to. And I say mindset because we are afraid to to niche down too much mm -hmm. because we think that's going to limit our potential revenue. When in fact, the opposite is actually true. Mm -hmm. You own a specific niche. And that's when things blow up because you get known as that person mm -hmm. over time. And that's when, you know, that's the, that's the key to growing more quickly, but it's a mindset thing that we have to, you know, we have to be okay with, and it might take some time. And the thing that I, I talk about a lot though, is testing. So I yep. wouldn't have learned this the way that I was able to learn it was say, Hey, I'll work with you. And you know what? I'm going to give you tons of time. I'm going to give you so much love. We're going to do this together. I'm rolling up yep. my sleeves and I yep. go, huh, it's working for you. Oh my God. What is it about you that this yeah. solution works for? Then I'd go, Hey person, say with no audience, we're going to do the same thing. I'm going to roll up my sleeves. We're going to get to work. We're going to turn this on and crickets, no sales. Yeah. Yeah. So then you step to step back and go, what is it about bucket number one versus bucket number two that makes them different with different outcomes. So, yeah. but the only way to, and again, of course I go, oh, people with audiences, it works for people who don't have audiences, it doesn't work for. And you'd go, duh. However, you have to go down that path and test yep. it and test it and figure out how to uh, spend a lot of, let's say just time to go, okay, what, like, what, how could I have tweaked this? Or how could I have massaged this or whatever, or up, oh, this isn't working. And that is where I feel like the rubber hits the road when you are willing yeah. to get in there and, and muck around and take all of your assumptions and like have your assumptions, have your hypotheses. Yeah. But as I like to say, hold them lightly because then you got to get in front of people and go, does this work? Does this work? What, you know, what are you struggling with? How can I make a difference for you? The key word for me that jumped out for me, Jillian, that you said is the willingness and that's some like I always I talk so much about mindset is if you don't have that proper mindset, that willingness to be in there, as you said, as you mentioned, in the muck, testing different things. If you don't have that willingness in the mindset of, OK, this is what I'm doing, you're not going to be successful. You're going to give up mm. at the at the point where, oh, I tested this. This doesn't work. Mm, I'm done. This This must not work. Whereas. The people who are successful, like going back to that, and I just use a million dollars because I think it's a bunch of crap. I mean, it's amazing amount of money, right? Like it's, I'm super grateful. We did it in four years. I'm very grateful, but I literally 
within a few days. I think it was like three days of us doing it. I was like, okay, cool. Now what? Yeah. Mm. Like that's literally what mm. happened. Mm. And so mm. it it's just, so whatever success means to you, let's just say it's a hundred thousand dollars. I want to create this online business and we work backwards from that. The person who is going to be successful much more quickly is the person who believes without a doubt they're going to hit that hundred thousand mm. dollars. So, you know, as we were talking before we hit record, like I'm a huge hockey fan, right? And so if I'm playing the game of hockey and I have zero doubt the puck's going in the net, I have no doubt that puck's going in the net and we're winning the game. You play the game differently because you know you're going to win at the end. And so you're like, okay, I know I'm going to hit $100,000 in my business. Not quite sure how I'm going to get there, but I know I'm going to get there. I'm going to figure it out. I love that. Okay. I, I coach and my audience is predominantly female creators. Awesome. And we have very different mindsets. Yep. We are pleasers. We're helpers. Yep. And I was on a call with somebody yesterday, a friend of mine who has like a crazy TikTok following. Mm -hmm. And I said, whoa, you could monetize this audience in selling directly to them. And she said, I feel uncomfortable selling directly mm. to them because all of, I already offer what I offer for free and I don't feel comfortable having people pay me for that. So you, yeah. so it's kind of refreshing. I have to say, talking to you today where you're like, you go, like you, you put that goal out there and you do every, you scrape to get there, you know, like thinking of hockey. My husband is a big hockey fan mm -hmm. and it is a scrappy sport. It is an ugly, yeah. get yeah. down and dirty kind of sport. And we're going to like fight it out to get that puck, you know, in yep. the net. Right. Yep. And so there is something super, uh, testosterone about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I also get the other side, right? So I, I work with, um, the majority of my students actually are, are female, um, business owners. And so, so how do you get them to go, go chase that puck and yeah, when it fails, pick yourself up out of bed and go again. How do you do that? Yeah. And I, I don't mean to, to paint this, you know, this amazing rainbows and unicorns picture of it's always like, oh, just go get it, you know, and believe that you're going to do it all the time. Stuff comes up, right? You're going to have doubts like and I and I learned this after eight and a half years. I have uh, suffered from anxiety mm -hmm. since like I can date it back to like seventh grade. And when I started my own business eight and a half years ago, my anxiety shot through the roof. And it's something that I've really had to learn how to deal with. And so I can sit here and tell you that that is the fastest way to grow your business in believing without a doubt that you're going to hit your goal. It wasn't always that easy for me because of anxiety and, you know, and in later years here, depression and stuff like that. It's the case of, you know, in speaking, you know, directly to like your friend that you, that you had a call with yesterday, a lot of people are, are like that, regardless, men or women or what have you, what, you know, that part is, I think is irrelevant. Rather, it's the mindset of, I'm not like, I don't, I'm not comfortable selling my expertise. And I'll tell you this, the big mindset shift for when you're selling something is if your goal is to have an impact on as many people as possible, and we define impact in so many different ways, it's, it's very individual, right? But if my goal is to have an impact, meaning I want to change that person's life in some way, mm. I will tell you that free content is not going to change their life. Tell me more. And this, this is from, I'm, I, I think I'm today's episode. I want to say is like 630 or something on my pod on this podcast here. And so if somebody doesn't want to, to, to pay for, you know, to come coach with me, 
absolutely no problem. There's 630 episodes that you can go listen to all for free, right? Mm -hmm. And of course, some people are going to take, I get emails and messages all the time saying, hey, just listening to your show has changed my life. I totally get that. Mm -hmm. But when people pay for something, they have more skin in the game. They Now they're like, ooh, I'm invested in this. I better take action. I better, you know, do what I'm being told or do what I'm learning. I'd say do what I'm being told, like in a coaching perspective, right? Or I've bought this course or whatever it might be. I'm going to take this more seriously. I just paid, you know, whatever it is, like $200, $500, $20,000, whatever it might be. I'm going to take this more seriously. So that when we are as creators, if that is our goal to have an impact, like a deep impact on people, the free stuff is amazing. I'm not saying don't do free stuff, but the selling part is where that actual, like the, the, the impact really happens. Okay. Because just a now couple. they have, yeah, go totally. Ahead. I complete, that is, I completely agree. Okay. So given your whole thing about mindset, I want to pose you a couple of questions and say, how do you deal with this? How do you deal when you put out an offer and nobody buys with so, mindset? Yes, you do not create the offer until somebody buys. Okay. I have done this in so for so many years people taught go create the course, go create mm. go create this and then then start selling it. Mm. January 2014 is when literally that was my first month in business. I had this concept for an ads course. I called it FB Advantage, Facebook Advantage, and I was teaching online businesses how to use Facebook to automate leads and sales. I didn't create the course. I created web I created a webinar. I wrote emails to invite people, all that, you know, I created the whole webinar funnel and I had what my promise was of the course. Mm -hmm. I had this is what it was going to be like and then this is what I'm going to teach you inside like in you know, we're going to cover this. And then I'm going to deliver it to you live over I think it was like 6 weeks or something like that. And again, I priced it at, at four ninety seven, nine ninety seven. I didn't create the course because I didn't know if anybody was going to buy the damn thing. Honestly. Okay, but here's the thing: I would say yep. there's even a deeper thing, which is mm -hmm. I think that is absolutely. I would I agree with you one hundred percent. That is our yeah. whole philosophy behind Mylogy Car. Go test it. Go put up a sales page. See if people buy. Yeah. But there's a deeper thing. Let's say you put this. You're putting your heart and soul even into all of this material to support yeah. it. And nobody buys and you yep. feel this sense of rejection, even though yep. it's irrat like you're like, I didn't build it out. I yeah. didn't do that. But there's something to saying, Rick, I'm rejecting you. Mm -hmm. You know, that's how people perceive it, whether that is sure. true. How do you deal with that? How do you pick yourself yeah. up? How do you put out the next offer? Yeah. And, I, and I'm, I'm, I kind of thought you were going to go there. Okay. And so I did the exact same thing early on. I was like, if, if I didn't meet my goals, or let's just say I was doing a launch. And again, as a simple number, it's like, all right, my goal here is $50,000 in this launch. Okay. And I do 27,000. Right. Ooh, I'm a failure. People are rejecting me. People don't want this. I messed up. I didn't know what I was doing. And so I, my identity for so many years in the business was the business. Mm. Meaning my identity was based on how successful the business was. But also on the flip side, how like poorly the business was doing that my, that was my identity. So I had these way like big highs and really, really low lows. And that's the kind of feeling that people can have. I totally get that when they put an offer out and nobody buys it. It's number one, it's, it's not personal, right? Sometimes people will say like, I don't, I don't like Rick. I don't like how he does things. Okay, cool. Like it's not, and granted it, it's, I've come to, that's been a process, right? And the other side of it though, is again, this goes back to having that conviction of like, I'm going to figure this out. Mm. Okay. I've, I've created this offer. Again, I'm not cr actually creating an offer. I'm creating like the framework of it. I've created this offer that I think my people want. And there's, there's also, we can spend a whole episode on things that you can do to make sure that what you're creating, even before you sell it, even before you create it, is something that your people will want. 
right? And I, you can do this without an email list, without, you know, you can test all these different things, get feedback from people, and then based on the information that you have, the best to your knowledge, then create an offer around that. So let's just say you do that and then still nobody buys. Mm. Okay, we need to go back and listen. We need to go back and talk. One of the best things that I did in, and so by the way, before I even share that, it's, that is hard. Like, I'm not going to lie. Like if no one buys it, like it's really, really hard. Like our mind search just goes into, to overdrive, you know, as an anxious person, it starts to spiral. And I coach, you know, multiple six figure, multiple seven figure online business owners. The same thing happens. It doesn't, it's like, it's, you learn that it's not going to go away completely, but mm -hmm. it's how you deal with it when it happens. So people at their level uh, in business, it's not a case of no one's buying. It's a case of, I didn't hit my goals. Mm -hmm. And so it's, so then it's like, again, the same thing happens. Like, oh, what does that mean about me? I'm a failure. I must've done something wrong, man. I screwed up man, they don't really like me, you know, all these, all these different things. And the breakthrough that I had in terms of wrapping my identity up in my business is that I was getting coached by somebody a couple of years or several years ago. And they said and something that clicked for me. And they said, you are not your, you've heard this a million times, but you've heard, you are not your business, your business. And they literally said like on video, I'm showing like, they sit, the business sits next to you in a chair and you can like pat it on its head right now. It's like good, good business. But, the, but you're sitting here as yourself. The business is over here next to you as its own entity. It, you are not the business and the business isn't you. And someone would say, well, wait a minute, I'm the face of the business. The business is my brand. And which is the same thing for me, even still my identity is not the business, mm. but that's, it takes time to understand that. And it's never personal, right? I would argue that if someone is, because we all get, you know, we always, we always get comments from people, whether it's on social media or email or what have you, people giving you a hard time, right? You have people like, the way that, and it's hard, and I can list off a whole bunch of people that have multiple seven-figure businesses. It's no different. They get a they get a cutting comment from somebody, if you will. It hurts. It stings. Like we're human beings, right? But I look at that as my my joke with it is you've made it, mm. because that means you're putting your stuff you're putting your stuff out there, and it takes a lot, like. The whole judgment thing, and again, we could go so many different directions, but like you walk into a Starbucks, right? And I'm speaking to everybody listening right now. You walk into a Starbucks, are you going to get judged? There's people sitting at tables, baristas, whatever. Are you going to get judged? Are you walking to Target? I'm just thinking about right across the street from me, there's a Target and there's a Starbucks over there. Like you walk in anywhere, you are going to get judged. It's human nature to be judged. We do it subconsciously. When you know that it's going to happen regardless, it kind of removes, lessens the pressure a little bit of like, like I'm being judged right now by people, by people listening to the show. They're like, oh, I hate his voice or God, this guy <laughs> makes no sense. Or, uh, or he I, knows I, what he's talking about or on the flip side. Right. But like, I'm not going to stop like trying to add value. It's the same thing with like the content that I put out in the podcast, for example. Yeah. At first I was like, Ooh, is this going to be, and I'm a perfectionist, right? I'm a with, like trying to recovering perfectionist. So I'm like, it's hard for me to put things out when I don't think they're as good as they should be in my mind. And it's all subjective, right? But it makes it easier. My point is it makes it easier when we know we're going to get judged regardless. Mm -hmm. When we can accept that, it makes it easier for us to put our stuff out there. And when we don't sell a course or a program or whatever, that's okay. 
we figure out what didn't happen, like what, okay, what didn't work? We became, you know, we put our, um, you know, or get our magnifying glass out, if you will. We try to figure out like, all right, what happened? What didn't work there? Mm. What can I change differently? Mm. And the cool thing is about running your own business is you can turn around and do it just the next week. Take right. what you learned and you can do it all over again. I say it's like getting curious. Ooh, yeah. what is that? Rather than, yeah. oh, this is all about me. It's like, oh, let's get curious. Like at anybody who does meditation or whatever and you go, it's so boring. Yep. Well, like go get curious about being bored. Yeah. One of the best thing, and I would, I'm coming back to what I was going to say before, one of the best things that I did and- you know, if, if somebody says what, well, once one thing you regret, like I regret, I didn't do this sooner, uh, a year and a half into my business. I remember exactly. I was sitting in a, I'm a big coffee person, but don't like Starbucks, but I keep mentioning Starbucks. I was in a Starbucks here in San Diego and I took five, this is back when I was using, um, Skype. I took five Skype calls with five of my quote unquote, ideal people who had bought my original program. And I just wanted to get feedback from them. I wanted to learn more about them. I wanted to learn more about like, what were they struggling with? What did they think about the program? How has it changed their business? Like, how are they using it? It was like a 15 minute conversation. And I had, I think I had four to five calls. Holy cow, it was the greatest thing I'd ever done. Because I got di here directly from my students and get their feedback and their struggles. So now... I can take that information and use it for my marketing, use it for my emails, use mm. it to for my sales page, use mm. it for improving the program. Mm. And you can do this whether you have students or not, paying customers or not. You can ask people who follow you on TikTok, for example, you can put it out there. Hey, I've just opened up five times on my calendar for this coming Friday for 15 minutes each. I'd love to chat with you or I'd love to help you with whatever you know, click the link in my bio or, or, you know, what, however, TikTok, however you do it with TikTok, that sort of thing can give you invaluable information. Mm. And then it's how you use that information. And like, everybody always wants to know, like, well, I don't know how to write ad copy. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say in my emails. Use the exact language <laughs> yes. that your perfect person uses. Is yeah. I love that. Yep. Okay. Rick, one last question mm -hmm. if you were to and it's just like a big one but if there's yeah. one thing that people in my audience could do to get out of their own way yeah to accelerate their growth what would it be one, I have to choose one. All right, maybe more, <laughs> but just, you know, that thing where like, for example, yeah. people will say, I wish I grew my email list, grow your email list. There's money in your email list. It, it could yeah. be uh, work on your mindset because what, I, you know, those kinds of things. It could be Facebook ads. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I would say, I would say hands down when people ask me, what do I attribute such the growth I've had over the years in the business. What do I attribute that to? And that 100% is the, and I hate the word networking. So I'm not even going to use that, but it's literally the people that I got to know mm. early on. Mm. And then, mm. you know, just, you know, just reaching out, like, just like you just did. I did. You reached out on Instagram DM. Pat Flynn, who runs Smart Passive Income, who has a very successful business, multiple YouTube channels, huge podcasts, all this other stuff. He lives like literally a mile down the road from me. He's he's my best friend. I met him back in 2013, I believe, or 2014. Uh, no, 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 I take that back. It was 2012 because I was still in the corporate world and I was coming down here to San Diego to call on some of my clients and I literally just reached out to him to see, hey, would you be up for having coffee? Mm. Introduce myself. Again, I took a chance and he said yes. And it was supposed to be like a 30 minute coffee. We ended up talking for like two hours. And it's just that sort of thing. Try to make connections, but don't mm. make connections thinking that you want something from that person. Mm. 
think like you just legitimately want to make a connection with them, try to add value to them or th to their audience. Mm. That one thing will very, very quickly more, I think more quickly than anything, grow your business. I and love then, that. I love that piece of advice. So uh, for example, when I was first starting out, okay, so I told you we built Catch My Party, then we built a pop-up mm -hmm. app and I would go to conferences for, mm -hmm. you know, that were predominantly women. And I printed out a like flyer and I yeah. said, Hey, I know this sounds really weird, but I'm a blogger and you're a blogger. And I built this tool because my husband can build stuff and you might want to try it. And we give you 30 days free and we just want this to work for you. If you have any feedback, let me know. But here is this flyer. Here we are. Yeah. Like it, we're all bloggers. We live in the digital yeah. space and I'm yeah. handing this out to them and I'm kind of doing it secretly because I'm not like I didn't pay the conference to be a sponsor. So I'm like right. doing it on the down low. But it was that's how I did it. And then I became friends with a lot of those people. Because I was yeah. just saying, like, try this. Tell me what you think. Blah, blah, blah. Let's be friends. And those friends have stuck with me. And when I need somebody to test something, I go, hey, so-and-so, like, yep. try, you know, check. What do you think? Yeah, exactly. And it's it's like one of the one of the easiest ways to make those connections is exactly what you just said, Jillian. Go to conferences. So, like, for you, if you haven't already, I would absolutely do anything you can to get to the ConvertKit conference. It's mm -hmm. happened already this year. But in Boise, ConvertKit is mostly creators. Like that's their primary audience. So I'm gonna like I'm gonna get on a plane and go to Boise. I think it's in like June or something like that. I'm gonna go to um to the ConvertKit conference and start talking to people. Like that's my audience. And then it just builds mm -hmm. from there. Mm -hmm. Get to know the speakers, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Make those connections. And then I'll give you a part of a one B to this Okay, is you've got to have consistent content, mm -hmm. whatever that looks like a podcast, YouTube channel. That is one regret. I wish I'd started YouTube years and years and years ago. I mean, I did, but it's, it's not very good, but I'm getting, I'm getting into it, taking it more seriously now, but have some form of content that you are most comfortable with. And if you were like, I want to create all the content, <laughs> right? But that's a lot to do, then do video because mm -hmm. you can do so much with video. Mm -hmm. You can rip the audio for podcasts. You can put the video on YouTube. You can cut up the video and repurpose it for different pieces on TikTok or Instagram reels or LinkedIn or whatever it might be. You've got to have a consistent content strategy, consistent, I mean, weekly. Mm -hmm. I agree with putting that. out some form of content to start to build your audience. I love that. Okay, Rick, this is, I, I, I love, I kind of feel like we've gone full circle, like how I reached yeah. out to you and now I feel like we're yeah. best friends. So uh, <laughs> if people want to learn from you, to see, to be one of your students, all of that, like how, yeah. what's the best way? Yeah. I mean, the best place to start is with the podcast, The Art of Ooh. Online Business. Okay. And, you know, it's on all the podcasting platforms. Uh, shoot me a DM on Instagram. <laughs> I'm at Rick Mulready. And uh, my website, which at the time we're recording this, we're going to be redesigning here in a few months, rickmulready.com. Um, but yeah, let me know you heard me on the uh, podcast here. Awesome. Well, I just have to say, Thank you so much for Absolutely. just sharing all of your knowledge and your experience and your struggles and all of that. I really appreciate yeah, my it. My so pleasure. Th Thanks, thank Julian. you. Appreciate it. I hope you guys like this episode. I thought it was really interesting. I thought that Rick shared some strategies that you could definitely implement into your business immediately. And I loved his idea about networking. And I love that he was vulnerable and really showed the ups and downs he's gone through. I think we all go through those and there's something refreshing about hearing it from somebody who is so successful. Speaking of success, if you feel like every other blogger has figured this out except you, please come to my workshop on October 6th at 1 p.m. Central Time, where I will share a whole new way for you to grow your business. It's easy. I'll share how to package up what you know and sell it to your people. Wouldn't increasing your income be an awesome way 
to end the year. So head to empire.mylotreecart.com. Sign up, $10. I cannot wait to see you there. And I'll see you here on the podcast next week.